What is going on Diablo 2 fans? Dobrunski here and today I'm going to be breaking down a budget Blizzard Magic Finding Sorceress build. I've had a lot of requests on my channel to make some more budget oriented character builds and I thought this would be the perfect video to make because Ladder did just recently reset. I will be streaming with this character for the next month or so completely solo self found on Twitch. Of course, link for my Twitch channel, it is in the description below, Twitch slash Dobrunsky125. So if you guys could give me a follow there, I'd really appreciate it. And you can see how I sort of build this character completely on my own from the ground up. No bots, no D2JSP, nothing like that. And like all of my previous build videos, timestamps will be in the description below. So if you guys want to jump back and forth between the attributes, gear or gameplay, they're there for you guys to use. So please take advantage of them. Other than that, guys, I really do hope you enjoy this video. Let's jump in. <laughs> There's a few basic points that I want to cover about the sorceress before we jump into the gear and the gameplay and the first is of course the attributes in the skill tree distribution. So this character is no different than any of my single player builds, it is a max fight a setup. So I have just enough strength to equip my gear which this is so early on that I don't even have a spirit and a monarch shield yet so I would suggest anywhere between like 50 to 60 strength and then put nothing into dexterity, nothing into energy, and then everything else into vitality. I do have a little bit more strength than 50, but that is because of some plus strength that's on my gear, which we'll dive into in a little bit. And then as far as the skill tree distribution goes, I have a couple single hard points into the typical one point wonders for the sorceress. So one into warmth for mana recovery. I have one into telekinesis, one into teleport, and then I do have five hard points into static, and then the plus three skills that I get from my gear, which again, we'll dive into the gear in a little bit. So I just did that so I had a little bit extra radius for static field although really when I'm mode tricking Mephisto don't really use static but it's just there to give a little bit extra radius because I don't have the crazy amount of plus skills that a fully decked out character does so I put a little bit more than one hard point and then for the cold skill tree I have 17 points into cold mastery that just gives me minus 100 cold res and then I have maxed blizzard and then I've been working my way to max all of its synergies out including one extra point into frozen armor for sort of a passive defensive skill buff. I do have a couple of suggestions and tips for this character in terms of breakpoints and support that you use with the sorceress. So I think that 63 FCR is basically the bare minimum for effectively moat tricking Mephisto in hell difficulty. And this breakpoint can be achieved by a variety of different gear pieces, typically using spirit and a crystal sword, stealth, and then a combination of one or two FCR rings, depending on how much FCR you have to roll on your spirit rune word. That's going to help you effectively reach the 63 breakpoint. And the second tip or suggestion I have is to equip a lower res wand. This is going to help you kill Mephisto a little bit quicker. In addition to your cold mastery, it's really easy. You can just shop one for a vendor and just carry it on the offhand on Switch. You get like 60 plus charges and picking up all of the gear that drops off of each Mephisto kill and then selling it back to a vendor will give you enough gold to restock your potions and repair the charges. So I definitely think a lower res one is really important substitute for this character. And the third and final suggestion that I have is to not bring along a mercenary. Early on in the ladder you probably don't have a 4 open socket full arm yet to make the rumored insight for mana recovery. But if you do, I still think it's a bad idea to bring along a mercenary. Yes, it kind of alleviates the need to constantly mana pod, having that meditation aura. But the mercenary is going to more often than not aggro the council and the ghoul lords, which is going to make your life a little bit more challenging when you're most tricking Mephisto. So I think your best bet is to just break mana pods, have no mercenary support and then achieve the 63 FCR breakpoint. But that is all of the key important points that I wanted to touch on. If you guys think I missed anything, feel free to let me know in the comments section below. But now I'll go over the gear and then we'll do some gameplay and show you guys some example runs and where I magic find with this setup early on and also some very basic map reading tricks that you guys can use on ladder. So as far as the gear goes for the sorceress, it's centered around trying to get that 63 FCR breakpoint and then getting as much MF as I can without having like completely trash gear and no resistances. Now I don't think your res is super important for farming Mephisto, but it does help to not have your res in the negatives, at least in my opinion it does. So I have 35 fire, 68 cold, 42 lightning and 51 poison with this setup. And for the weapon, I'm using Spirit and a Crystal Sword. This one was really fortunate to roll 35 the very first try on our 8-man push to Hell Bale. 
on the very first day of ladder reset. Now, if you don't have a 35 FCR spirit, it's not the end of the world. You can just carry or stack additional FCR with two FCR rings. But having 35 just gives me a little bit of freedom to run some different ring selection, which is really nice. You'll kind of see with the rest of my gear here that I'm kind of in between breakpoints, but really I'm just trying to build my sorceress up with whatever junk I find off of Mephisto, which will kind of make sense when you show you some of the gameplay. But I have a Tarn Helm, which I actually found this, I think, 15 runs into Mephisto on my first ladder MFing stream, which is a really nice upgrade from this helmet that I was using, Lore, or in Soul in a Skullcap to give me the plus one dull skills, energy, and lightning res. But uh, Tarn Helm is definitely a lot better because of the additional MF. And I paired that with Stealth. And then I have, I was really fortunate to get Trang's gloves as well. So that kind of shows you how I'm in between FCR breakpoints. I'm way above 63. And then I paired that with an FCR ring, which gives me just lightning res, poison res, and a little bit of strength and life. If I didn't have Trang's gloves, I would need this FCR ring to hit 63. But again, finding Trang's kind of puts me in that in-between breakpoint, sort of. And then for the belt, this is just a random rear belt that has a lot of FHR and strength. So it's kind of nice for equipping gear like I don't have to invest as much into strength and then I have an angel ring paired with a all res mf amulet and then I have ancients pledge and shield and then I have this pair of cold res fire res mf fhr boots that I found and then on switch I have this rare wand that has 67 level one lower resistance charges so I could actually shop at this point with my character level for a lower res wand that gives me level two charges but uh it's just a little bit more minus res, but I use this on Switch for Mephisto to do a little bit of extra damage. That's the gear in its entirety. Um, I do have a couple small terms here. Seven to life, um, poison res, fast run walk, poison res, 22 fire res, GC, 29 lightning res, and then 27 to life. So basically just anything that I've found along the way to make my character a little bit stronger. I am at this point only level 73. Decent damage, I guess. 2.3k blizzard, 900 health, 270 mana, and then have the, again, 63 FCR breakpoint, just under 100 MF, and then actually have the 86 FHR breakpoint, which is a little bit overkill with my gear, but I was able to reach it uh, pretty easily. So I think early on, your best MF rotation is just Mephisto and Pindle. You can put Indarl into the mix, but typically, uh, I find that Mephisto and Pindle is enough time to not get you realm down and get some really good gear that way, so I think it's best to do those types of runs again feel free to let me know in the comment section below if you guys disagree but a little trick here when you go to the durance of hate level 2 the waypoint as you exit so here's the exit you always want to teleport to the shield hand side of the sorceress or the left hand side and then just kind of follow that clockwise and then keep teleporting around the perimeter and eventually you should find the entrance way so here it is so you see, as we leave the exit, we just go to the shield hand side. Gotta watch out for dolls, they're very annoying. But then uh, you just teleport down here. Sometimes you'll get some really weird maps where the entranceway to the Durance Fate level 3 is actually in the center if you do the entire perimeter. But more often than not, if you just go to the shield hand side as you exit, you will usually find Mephisto or the Durance Fate level 3 pretty quickly. So basically, we just teleport to Mephisto, aggro him, bring him down. And avoid his elemental attacks just out of range here and then he's just gonna sit there run back and forth go to the offhand cast lower res and we just blizzard him this is the standard moat trick very simple good way to get gear early on though so i'll periodically just cast a couple blizzards and i'll switch to my offhand and then keep casting lower res on him Now, if you do happen to aggro one of the council or the ghoul lords, it's not the end of the world. You can teleport to the other side of Mephisto and you can kind of lock him in his little kind of ledge things, which I'll show you guys an example next run. But this is all you really need to do. You just keep doing this over and over again and you will eventually get some nice stuff. But pick up all of his loot because you can always sell it back to the vendor for, for money and then just check these chests and stuff, weapon racks, because you never know what you might get. Check the little chest in the back. These two chests. Weapon rack, nothing. 
that is your run. Then just go to Act 5. As soon as you leave the waypoint, talk to Deckard. Identify whatever you picked up from Mephisto. Run over to Larzik and sell it. Ooh, two to bone crossbow skills, nothing else. And this combination will kind of always just keep your money replenished, and then you can just repair your weapons to just repair these charges. And talk to Mala if you want to restock up on potions and get rid of your curse. And then I just do Pindle, and basically you do this cycle over and over and over again. And if you keep doing it, you'll be able to keep your gold at high enough level to repair everything. Try and make sure you cast that quickly to get Pindle before they charge you, because these guys will do a lot of damage if they charge you and get you. Again, we just pick up everything that drops. Sell it all. Good evening. 35k, 31k. There's tons of gold. You should never have a gold issue. You can always buy pots and stuff as long as you sell back what you pick up. But this is all that you were literally going to do. You're going to do this over and over and over again until you get better and better gear. So eventually I would like to get something like a Tal's armor off of Pindle or Scalders off of Mephisto, something like that. A Rax would be really cool. And Shaco, that'd be the biggest upgrade. If I could get Shaco, then I would switch to using Wizard Spike and probably try and go to Ancient Tunnels or Cows to get a Monarch to try and make Spirit there. But until I get those basic pieces of gear, this is all I'm really going to continually do over and over and over again. I'm going to do a second Mephisto run just to show you guys a different map spawn going to the shield side as you leave the waypoint. And I'm going to try and aggro him or aggro the council so I can show you guys the different spawn. But so here is the exit. So then again, we just go to the left hand side, following the shield and skirting around the border. Keep potting. So here it is again. You can kind of see we just shield land side, skirt around the border. You will occasionally end up teleporting more, but more often than not, it should be pretty quickly to get there. The well, same idea. We're going to drag Mephisto down. I'm going to on purpose here. Hopefully I don't uh, just going to aggro these guys on purpose. So this is why I don't like having a mercenary because a mercenary will just run and aggro these guys. Oh, she's so just going to teleport up here and sort of drag Mephisto this way. And boom, lock him there on this ledge and same idea. Lower res one charges and then just blizzard and continue to do that. But that's the reason really why I wanted to show that. Because I could just say you're AFK, I can do nothing. It's not a big deal, but that's the reason why I don't like using a mercenary is because the mercenary will always run around and aggro the council for the Hydras and the Ghoul Lords and it just makes your life a lot more difficult. But if you do want to use a mercenary and you aggro them, or if you just they happen to be triggered, you can do this little trick here where you just teleport up and get him stuck on the ledge. It's a little bit harder than just doing the standard mode trick. It's not too bad. Just cycle back and forth between using low res one and blizzard. Same idea. Picking up what drops. I will identify this GC. That's a nice GC. 12 FHR and 22 cold res. So this gives you kind of an idea of the slow building up process. So that's going to give me even more cold res. Cast me at 75. Even though cold res isn't super important, I mean, it's still better than... And it does have 12 FHR too, which again is way overkill. I don't really have room to carry anything anymore. Pick these chests. If you really want to, if these guys are on their own, you can lower res and do the council, but uh, I wouldn't do it unless you have a bow barb helping out or something. The so same idea, Haragrith, Act 5, Dr. Deckard, Good day. identify items, Larzik, sell back, repair your charges or whatever. Junk, junk. You only need to repair the charges every run, because you should only be using like three to five charges maybe every Mephisto run. Then talk to Mala, pot up, and then do a Pendle run. And again, just repeat this over and over and over again, and that's how you can build up a Sorceress off the ground from square one. 
try and make sure you cast Blizzard right away and Glacial Spike. Stop Pindle from coming in and wrecking you. And we did get another level, putting us at level 74. Which is actually an upgrade. I'll show you guys in a second here. So go all Vitality. Another Blizzard Synergy point, so 2,301 cold damage. 2,339. So I'll just continue to keep putting points into Ice Blast and then eventually Ice Bolt. To try and boost the overall damage of Blizzard. But just kind of showing you guys the idea of... kind of slowly building my character up again to sell these for cash. It's that whole idea of sort of putting everything together. Oh, by the way, this Shaco is not mine. This was given to me by somebody. I'm going to give it away on stream. It's not my Shaco. All souls so found. Everything else has been found myself, but the whole idea of putting your character together from scratch, I'm going to eventually use this Skulders or Ormus robes. Once I get another, another level, I think I can use this. I don't need the FHR from Stealth. So if I swap out Blizzard, just gives me an extra 13 cold damage, which will boost my Blizzard up a little bit higher so I can kill my Fisto a little bit quicker. And then eventually I'll switch to a Whiz Spike when I can make Spirit on the offhand. And then we'll try and start the process of getting a CTA on the offhand and that kind of thing. But this little cycle of MFing is all that you need to do over and over and over again until you get your base stuff like Shaco. And then you can move on for farming bases like Spirit uh, or Monarch Shield to make the Rumored Spirit and Cows or the Ancient Tunnels. Well guys, there you have it. That wraps up today's video. This is all that you need to do to build up your sorceries from scratch and collect wealth on ladder. Very basic gear and I showed you guys how you can get close to 100 MF and that Moat Trick Mephisto. And again, just doing the runs over and over again, you will continue to get better gear and make your sorceress stronger. But as always guys, if you could throw a like on this video, share it, and even consider subscribing if you're new to my channel. I post new weekly content and also stream on Twitch. So if you guys give me a follow on Twitch and a sub on YouTube, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, hopefully you guys found this video useful. And uh, as always, have a fan-frickin-tastic day. And I'll see you on my next video or live stream. Peace out.